Well, we're looking into uh, into the building, how it merged with the surroundings. We're also looking at the times that the building happened, and uh, um, we thought that this 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 building was quite outstanding from the very beginning uh, to, to to all of us here. Uh, its qualities, it quite small, uh, and we had a long debate about uh, how we can convert a small building to very big buildings, so we'll talk about the, the bigger ones a little bit later on. But we all felt that that, that, that uh, building does create a, a very beautifully and uh, cleverly made uh, headquarters, the tiny headquarters for the uh, roof contractors, and uh, the building represents what the roof contractor does, not in a very obvious way, sitting very well within the uh, quite remote part of London. I think it's, it's more that it cleverly uses old and new, it doesn't throw away, it unlocks a difficult site and changes it. Um, it's not the sign of the times and that it's not usual for contractors to go around commissioning architecture, so that's quite um, interesting in, in that sense for themselves. But I think it's also important, it does it in a delightful way. I think the Danian people talk about the new austerity, and therefore it's sort of, it's austere and it's economical and it's functional and that means something else. I think what's, what's good about it is reuse, solving an urban place, but in a really clever and delightful way. And it's the pleasure it brings that, that makes it stand out, not the austerity. The way in which the building and the set of buildings are orientated have been very carefully thought about. I think that's, that's extremely important in a world where you know, it's easy to create virtual relationships, this to its topography is important as a, as a tribal parliament set into a sacred landscape. So um, we think it's, it's extremely well conceived in, in that way. And then there's an economy. And actually, I think internally, there's, there's a, the potential for a very beautiful uh, condition of light um, between the outer weathering uh, skin and the internal uh, surface of the soffit of the ceiling in its timber, pattern timber, um, uh, as it responds to a place of community. So um, I, I think the section also is, is, uh, is potentially uh, beautiful and it's very, in terms of its scale and uh, the haptic qualities, seems to have a lot of promise at this stage. I, I just love seeing that what was refreshing, you know, in the, you know, going through scheme after scheme after scheme of most overpowering you know, commercial project. It's nice to see that there is an architect in action dealing with very basic human problems of creating the seafront circulation through buildings where people would feel comfortable thinking about nature and working on a small scale project with great deal of responsibility and. You know, so we just would like to encourage the project to continue and come up to a successful end because it seems to be at the very beginning of, of its uh, conceptual development. Is, is my right in saying it? Yeah, I think that's clear from the, the imagery. It's early. I think the areas that need a little bit more effort are the, the three buildings that face onto the river, that they seem to be a little less considered than the other two larger buildings. But I agree with you with Eric and, and Ava, the, the, the gesture, the, the things that are valued, the sensitivity of the architecture is all very positive, especially in the context of the other submissions. Mm, very much agree and echo those comments. The thing that I'd like to like say is the simplicity of how it's put together and recognising it's actually building a cultural centre. Um, it needs to be economically viable. Um, clearly there's some uh, economics of the buildings, but they also set, sit well with the adjacent uh, land uses. I can see it to be more a commercially viable uh, operation as well, which is obviously key mm -hmm. in getting something to, uh, off the ground.